Hello everyone and welcome back to my Armour 3 tutorials. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologise because I haven't been doing these for a while. Um, basically, well, Christmas, uh, I wasn't around my computer so I wasn't able to do it. And I've had a lot of uni work, a lot of uh, assignments, things like that to be handy. And So, um, my time that I've had available to make these tutorials has been quite low. Obviously, as I say, without having a computer, uh, well I had a laptop, but with, with, uh, without having a decent enough computer to run something like 3ds Max, there was no point in me making the tutorials on a rubbish computer trying to explain things, uh, especially without my mic and all my kit available. So, as I say, uh, sorry that it's been a long wait, but obviously we're going to be continuing with this series uh, fully way through, getting a house config into game, uh, fully animated, fully loaded, working in game, and then we'll be moving on to uh, vehicles eventually after that, like uh, sorting out lods and getting the car in game with physics, things like that. So, without further ado, let's get on with this uh, with this video. Alright, so, today's episode, or 1.4, is uh, we're going to be talking about limitations to what you can use in a 3DS Max model, uh, sorry, a model made in 3DS Max for Armour 3. Because if we're going to be adding more detail to a particular building, we want to know that it's not going to, um, the building isn't going to lag out in the game. So there's a few things we need to think of. First of all, we need to think of think of the poly count of the building itself. Uh, remember in 3ds Max, if you press seven, you can see up in the top left-hand corner you have polys and verts. So basically, polys are uh, the faces that the game has to render. So there's a few things we want to think about. Uh, first of all, what is the limit for an, an individual building? Well. Default for armor is going to be at between twenty to thirty thousand polys. It's not very high for a particular for in regards to most games, but obviously if that's the limit, that's what we have to try and work on. So the house that we make or any building we make is going to have to be around thirty thousand at the most. There are some variations. Also, what we're going to have to think of is how many buildings are going to be in an area, or how many things are going to be in an area because if every building is at the max amount of polys the amount of rendering in that area is going to be higher so we've got to work out how how many buildings we can have in the area and what is suitable to use so as I say we can see this current building is now only at 186 so we've got a long way to go and uh, I will be explaining through and through different things on how to reduce polys in your model Things like LODs, things like that will obviously be done in Object Builder when we get around to it. So, one of the main things we'd have, we'll be doing is working on faces that people don't see. So, for example, inside of these walls there will not be another face inside. It won't be like an inverted box. But things like, things like these underlined sides, you know, would those faces be needed in the end? Those kind of decisions, things like cupboards, you wouldn't want you wouldn't necessarily need a cupboard that was a whole cube you because it would add an extra extra five sides you ne don't necessarily need you could have just have the one face uh, for the front of the cupboard those different things we'll be thinking of and things like texturing uh, making normal maps different ways of slowing down the poly count so uh, I thought I'd go over that so we kind of know that the 30,000 mark is kind of what we're going to be working with and uh, as we get further into this building, uh, obviously we'll be looking at that and trying to lower it down. So let's get back into our building and uh, what I thought we'd do today is work a bit more on the outside of the building, kind of get the building going up a bit more uh, with a bit more of a structure and uh, something I want to show you guys today, a few little tricks. So what we'll do first of all is uh, we're actually going to be copying this layer. Uh, so we're going to be adding a floor then we're going to be copying it above and uh, using it for like a second and third and fourth floor so if you but it'll be eventually saved in a separate model so however many you can choose how many floors you want and you just add them in game if you wanted five floors you could have that if you wanted ten floors if it was possible to add in in the game with your poly count you could have that so I think what we're going to first of all do is obviously we need to note that we've got windows, we've got doors. 
So you're not going to have a door in on the top floor. So what I'd do is Control A, turn the grid back on with G, and we're going to hold down Shift and we're going to drag this up. We're just going to make another copy and we're going to copy to another object. We're going to go onto that object up, up in the top left-hand corner up here. Double click it. And what we're going to do is, we, even though it looks nice, we're going to have to work out how we're going to be. Uh, we want these windows on this side as well. So simple. Press left, or sorry, press. F uh, we're going to go to. We're actually going to go to the back view. So you have to click up here for the back view, and uh, find it on the list. And is that the right one? It is. So just double checking that back view and what we're going to do is we're going to select that wall we're going to deselect by holding down alt on these ones we're actually going to do some fine placing we're actually going to drag that out and copy it again then we're going to do the same thing by pressing front selecting the front wall that we're not going to want anymore holding down alt to deselect the rest of it Draw a nice big box to make sure, and we're going to hit delete. So we've now got that space. So what we can do is we can go back to this object, hit five to select the lot, press T, and we're going to rather than don't hold down shift, we're going to drag it down to there. We're then going to hold down E. Oh, hit escape. If it's not already turned on, make sure you've got angle snap toggle up here. Uh, just so it can go around at angled increments. And when it's in the right place, we're going to just zoom in a bit more, make sure that we can get it as aligned as possible. That looks good for, good enough. And perfect. Now what we're going to do, we're going to hit 1. We're going to hit... We're going to go into shaded. We're going to go into wireframe. We're going to select this point. And we're going to. Okay, there's a couple of things we want to be doing here. If we go back into shaded. We want to be double checking that. Okay, this one doesn't have an edge. That's that's fine. Uh, what I will actually do for a second is make a bit of different colour. Uh, if we give this one grey as well, makes it a bit easier to see the lines. And this one doesn't have an edge either. Nice and useful. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go into wireframe mode, go on vertex, and we're going to go down to target world. And zoom in. Ah, right, my, one second. I forgot something here. We need to select this with a control A and attach it back. And now you'll find you're able to weld. See here, it was 167, 176, it's now 175. Hit the plus key. When that's done, now I'm going to go for these ones, these ones, and these ones. Move on to these side. Keep moving through press plus every time. Obviously the reason why we're doing this, not only does it not only does it limit the polys, but it also keeps everything without small gaps uh, that aren't really needed. Okay, so we don't need any other sides. I don't know why I was trying to do that. So what we can do, we can go back to shaded mode. And if we press 5, if we quickly go into realistic and turn off these edges you'll be able to see that we now kind of have a nice upstairs upstairsy kind of area downstairs we still have space for the door which is all good so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and hide that one now or what we can do is we can click it hit F2 and we can give it a little rename so we can give it upper floors and this one we're going to do base floor. Perfect. 
Alright, so now what do we need to do? Well, I think we're hiding the upper floor because we can leave that for now. We can start working a bit more on the lower uh, lower floor, so pressing F4. We can bring back into the line view and we can start doing a few little tweaks. So the first one I can think of is we kind of want a slight window lip for the windows. So by holding down left click, holding down control and shift we can select the ring. Then clicking control, holding down, oops. Uh, okay, it's probably best to do it one by one. So we do it one by one, we can go into bevel and we can drag these different so this is height so it's how far out it's going to go so we're going to i'm going to change that to 0 0.5 zoom into that it looks like a good number okay let's try 0 0.5 for that nope 0 0.05 it looks like we want okay so we want a minus number for this one 0 0.01 okay so we don't want it to go too thin but we do want to have it have it indented slightly uh, so let's go let's go 0 0.1 and let's make this 0 0.1 Uh, it may not look indented, but I'm sure if we bevel this one, that's whoops, wrong one. If we bevel this one, you'll be able to see that there is a difference. I hit the plus, select them, hit the pl oh, undo one there, and we can of course add one for the doors. Okay, so how does that look if we take that out and we press Shift F1? Uh, is it Shift F1? It's Shift F3, there we go. We can switch out and we can see that it's got nice, very nice little grooves. Adds a nice little bit of detail and we haven't really gone up by too many polys. Bevels, things like that will raise the poly by a decent amount, so you do want to be careful. But uh, if we can get the right balance, we're all good. So let's get on with the uh, other side quickly. So holding down control and shift, hitting bevel, hit the plus key, or select the next ones, plus. It's already been done. So that one's already been okay. So it's quite difficult to uh, work out. Whoops, when you've done them. Probably best to go into shaded mode, just so we don't have all the rendering shadows going on. And there we go. So we've now got a little bit extra detail there. The next thing I'm thinking we need to do is we can, we're going to need to want to add a, a floor. And the way I like to do this is by if we grab, simply grab another box. Draw it. Press T. Press W. Or press R, sorry. And we can go ahead and scale it slightly bigger uh, right click convert to editable poly click on polygon first look at that face and drag it slightly bigger so we now have a floor the reason why I like to do this as a separate thing it also is going to allow us to uh, easily uh, unwrap for the second f for the floor we can also add things like slopes and extra detail outside the front as well uh, what I'm also going to do now is now we've got this front 
we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. Whoops. So, I'm going to go back into the base floor. Select these wall. Select this wall. And we're going to hit delete. Now, the reason why, I thought, let's make it a bit more interesting. Wrong bit. If we bridge this this together, select it as a face, we can extrude. And let's go for 25. Mm, is that a good amount? Okay, let's try 30. Okay, I think that'd be good. And then what we can do, we can do the same this side. It's all about experiment with experimenting with modeling. We can try and get the balance. And we can select these two faces. Hit delete. Press 3 to go into border mode. Select this border. Select this border. Hit bridge. Okay, and we can go ahead and do the same for this one. Bridge it. Might as well bridge this one whilst we're on the same tool. Hit 4 on them both. And extrude them hit delete, press 3 for border mode and bridge them. So now, what do we have a little bit different? Well, if we remember we can bring the upper floor in, we now have a slightly different shape for the bottom floor. So it will enable us to add a little bit more. So if we look at that, I think it still looks a bit weird. So, looking at this floor and where it's planned. I think we're going to bring this one out to here. It's going to bring this out to this line a bit. There we go. We'll do the same for this side. We can bring it out. It's uh, going out by two. There we go. So the bottom floor is going to be slightly bigger. Obviously we will give a roof to it. But it'll give a nice different shape. And what we'll eventually do, we'll start adding a few more bits, a few more floors and things like that. Uh, more details and then we'll start adding uh, things like helipads, uh, a lift, some stairs, doors, uh, actual window parts but uh, I like to add the windows actually in uh, 3D um, Object Builder just something I find a little bit easier okay guys as I say sorry for the long awaited uh, update again uh, I've been really busy but uh, I will be continuing these a lot more I uh, really hope you enjoy watching these series. Really, really good to see all the feedback you guys have been giving. Uh, really nice to know that you guys really do enjoy this and find this helpful. Uh, it really is great to hear that. Uh, obviously, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Like. Uh, obviously, if you subscribe, you'll know when I upload these more. And uh, do comment if you have any questions. Comment if you have any ideas, things like that. You might think you might know how to model. You might think that I'm doing something wrong. You might look at this and go, can we try this? Can we try and make it star-shaped? Can we try and give it a bit more detail on the front? You might you might want to suggest how we're going to be making the front look. I have a really good idea, personally, what I'd like to do. Uh, we can, I can show you quickly now. I'm thinking of making some stairs, some grand staircase that comes out on the, uh, either tailing straight down or forking out either side and tailing down, maybe with a slope one side, something like that. It's something we've, we're going to be thinking about. Uh, I do plan on making this a lot bigger. So we will make the top floor bigger. We'll also make the bottom floor bigger. We might even make use of doubling the top floor's width. Something like that. Something we'll talk about, as I say, in the next episode. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. As I say, hit the subscribe button like the video and uh, comment any suggestions or questions you may have. Thanks guys, really appreciate the support.